Hey guys, hey, it's me. Happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I know it's like super, super stressful, but I uh, have a great person to introduce you today. She's an incredible doctor and you are going to love her. And she's a really good friend of mine. We've known each other for a long time. And she's just going to help us talk about some fun things today. Since everyone is like down in the dumps, let's talk about sex. So I am going to connect you with her and we're going to have a little convo and you guys are going to love it. Um, she is here. Hold on one second. Okay, hold on. She calls herself the shameless psychiatrist. So like you guys know, oh my God, there she here is. I am. Dr. Dr. Lee. Lee. Yes. It's Leah. So she's the shameful psych psychiatrist. Shameless. Psych shameless psychiatrist, which I just love. Um, you're a mother of two, right? Mm -hmm. Two girls. Two girls, just Handful. like me. Um, wait, but how old are your kids? They're younger, though. Seven and ten. Okay, seven and ten. So mine are 19 and 22. And um, you guys, the reason that I wanted you to be introduced to... My friend Leah is because, first of all, she's got some really good tips sure. on how to get through COVID, get through quarantine, get through being single in quarantine, um, navigate getting being single out of quarantine. Nice. Um, so let's just let's just get started. Let's just like let you talk about you know. First of all, can you give us just like an idea of, you know, what we should be thinking about during during quarantine? Before we get into sex, just in terms of like, you know, mindfulness or how are we get, get, you know, just give us like three tips about how we can get through this. Um, I think one thing is learning how to manage uncertainty because it's a horribly uncertain time. Um, so, you know, I think one thing is to always be rational um, and think about what is uh, prob probably going to happen, not what possibly could happen because when you go down the pro the possibility route you go you can go bananas just thinking about all the possibilities but you right. got to narrow that down and say is that actually probably going to happen and if it's not if it's not probably going to happen then don't then don't keep thinking about it um you could get out walk outside and get hit by lightning too but it's not probably going to happen so you know let's be real we hope not <laughs> you know um Another thing is I really like to schedule worry time, which means like instead of worrying the entire day about everything that could go wrong, you can make a list on your phone of, okay, I want to worry about this later. Like if I have to call someone or I have to do work, or I have to do this, I'm going to just write it on a list. I'm going to worry about it all at once because what's going to happen is that, you know, worry is going to like ruin your entire day, you know? And I find if I write it down, then uh, I can like let it go because I always think I'm going to forget to worry about it later. <laughs> then I won't forget. That's actually a good thing. If you like write it down so you can worry about it later and then just forget about it. Just be like, yeah, oh my exactly. God, I totally forgot. I'm so sorry. Or it may Hold not on. be even important anymore, you know, because whatever it was you were worried about went away. Yeah, I love so. that. So actually, you know what? I'm going to, we're going to write these down and I'm going to put them on my blog too, KKB Love. So um, then you can awesome. like put that out there because this is really some good stuff okay it's great so for kids too like it's great for to do with your kids like writing down their you know worries and say okay we're gonna get to that later if you have a kid who's always like stressing or needs always yeah. needs reassurance all the time yeah like I always talk about putting a pin in it because it's just like right now we can't we got to think about other things that are like low-hanging fruit so I'm always like mm -hmm. with my kids I'm always like let's put a pin in it oh that's um, great but idea. I like I like scheduling it because then it's like okay at 1 p.m and then we can like <laughs> regroup and be like okay like you know I love that. I love that. Um, so, all right. What, what's another one? Schedule other worry. Um, tolerate uncertainty, schedule right. worry time. Um, obviously there's the great ones about, you know, meditation practices of course are wonderful. Um, but meditation can be actually more simple than you realize. It doesn't have to be sitting down being Zen. You can meditate in a lot of ways. You can do a walking meditation where you just focus on your steps and you make them exactly even each time you focus on getting them exactly the same distance. And actually that's a form of meditation because it's a meditation is anything that distracts you from your thoughts. So uh, I meditate when I swim because I find that if I even the strokes exactly the same, 
that it's a meditation. Um, so it could be simple, like 10 minutes a day. And then, or the other thing that is really great is, um, is to do anything with intention. So like, instead of just mindlessly brushing your teeth, you can make a pack with yourself for a week. You're going to just really focus on how you brush your teeth. You're going to go through each quadrant. You're going to use the same amount of time for each quadrant and you're going to focus on the sensations. Even that is a type of meditation. So, you know, what you can just think about that. create a little bit of a mindfulness practice in something as simple as that, or you're going to agree to spend 10, you're going to think I'm going to spend 10 minutes with either my partner or my child being very present in that conversation and really just like think about nothing else but what that conversation was like and that's that's actually like being present in the moment so those are all great tips to tolerate all this stress we're under. I love that I was just writing these all down I'm going to put this blog up this afternoon with our photo awesome. um great. so those are do you have one more because I feel like I feel like you a lot more <laughs> I feel like there's a lot more there Leo um to it. well there's uh uh, one I like called uh, tip skills, Temp temperature, intense exercise, progressive muscle relaxation and pace breathing. And these are the ones you can do really quick if you're really stressed. Temperature okay. is put an ice pack over your nose and mouth and hold your breath for 30 seconds because it makes you feel like you're underwater and you uh, are like sort of drowning and your body will just slow everything down in order to preserve oxygen. So it's very calming. Yeah. Um, intense exercise is like high knees or jumping jacks for 30 seconds. So uh, you can run around your house, whatever it is that gets your heart rate up above 125. Actually, okay. if your kids are driving you crazy, you're getting a fight with someone and you're about to like scream at them, do like 30 seconds of exercise, then decide if you still want to scream. I know. I <laughs> wish I had this when I was on Housewives. I would have been amazing. I would have been running everybody everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Why is Kelly running all over the house? Oh, she's just, you know, it's one of her, uh, you know, Actually, it'd be like skills. you're in the middle of a fight. And you just do, you just do 30 seconds of jacking back to like, wait, hold on one second. And then you get back to them. I'm just going to do some push-ups for a second. I'm going to hold that thought for a second. Hold I love that. that. <laughs> and then progressive muscle relaxation is okay. tensing and relaxing different muscle groups in the body. And that can be done okay. quickly. Um, and there's a lot of things on the web about it, but um, it's basically like, you know, you squeeze your, your hands for five seconds, then you relax. You go sweep your shoulders, relax. You you pretend a big elephant's about to jump on your stomach, eh, relax. And then your thighs, your butt, your calves, your feet. And then you've, you've got to feel the difference between the tenseness and relax feelings. And that it's very, it works really well. Okay, I'm writing that down. I like the idea the of like recognizing the sensation. Like, I like that. Okay, and, and the last one. Pace breathing is the last one. Five seconds in, seven six seconds out. So you breathe out longer than you breathe in for a minute. I love that. I love that. You're such a smarty pants. You're such a smarty pants and you're so much fun. So it's just like, this is so great. Yeah. Okay, so. Well, I'm having we fun got, hanging out with got, you. We got some fun tips about how to navigate uh, during quarantine and COVID. And just like anytime that people are making your cuckoo crazy, you can just like do some of these fun things. I like the running around. I may do that. I also like scheduling. I may do that uh, this afternoon. <laughs> okay, Good. let's get into sex. All right, tell Great. me, what, tell me your thoughts. <laughs> well, I am a parenting expert, but I've also, you know, certainly been doing a lot of work with adults on sex uh, and sexuality and trying to, you know, it depends on what you're interested in. If it's about like, how to keep it real with your, your person during quarantine, that's one question. Then another question is like, how do you address the topics of sex and sexuality with your children? Um, and, you know, what do you do if you're single and you can't like date in the regular way? How do you, um, how do you handle that? So what are you interested in knowing? And then I'm, or what is the audience interested in knowing if anyone wants yeah, to type a I mean, question? I feel like we could just have these conversations for hours. Um, let's start with just like where we are right now with COVID and just talking about like how to keep your partner engaged because we're all like on top of our partners. So how do we keep them engaged? That's a good, that's a good, very good question. Um, the, because we're all always on top of our partners, it might feel like romance is dead because you don't like having date nights in the same way that you used to. Um, but what I really like to do is to challenge your partner to a, a, a dating situation in which one week, one person is in charge of the date. And the next week, the other person is in charge of the date. So 
Um, and if you're threesome, then the third person is in charge of the day. <laughs> anyway, and, uh, it goes anyway. on. It goes on. Anyway. Four, seven, five, seven. anyway, so um, in the in the in the first in the first uh, scenario with the partner, like let's say, okay, Thursday night we're gonna have a date. I'm gonna be in charge with the date. So I am gonna cook for you. You know, it's a surprise, but I want you to wear like dress a little nicer. And hopefully you can figure out a situation, get rid of the kids, whatever that is, do after they go to bed or, or put a movie up and I'm going to do something for you. So it could be anything from uh, cook them a really nice dinner. You could go, like retrieve all those old photo albums or play your wedding video or play the, your romantic song, like your first date, or, you know, like, you know, try to make it fun and, and fun and real or, the other person could say, oh, this is going to be a sexy time one. So they're going to order a bunch of new sex toys from Amazon and hold them <laughs> as a surprise and then whip out the big box, you know. And uh, I'm like totally getting embarrassed right now. <laughs> I, you know, Amazon's a resource of stuff. Leah, you're hilarious. So, like, right, you guys are so, you know, what we're talking about right now. I'm talking with my great friend, Leah, Dr. Leith, and she is unbelievable. She's giving us all these tips on how to navigate quarantine. And we are right in the process of talking all about a great three letter word, S E X. So, we're talking all about like our favorite, how to keep it real during um, COVID, during quarantine. Uh, you know, actually, I love that idea. I, um, Asked this guy that I'm dating if he wanted to have a date with me to go to Publix. And so I got dressed up and we went to Publix and we danced in front of the frozen food section. I'm not really sure how my uh, my my uh, sex toy would go down at Publix, but idea. maybe your sex toy wouldn't be so great then, but later it could be fun. <laughs> sex toy. I cannot believe I'm having this conversation. But also, you're like, like well, this is good this, for me. Yeah, Leah, this is good for me. It's getting me out of my comfort zone. Leah's like, oh, oh my god, Kelly is a grown adult and she can't even talk about sex. <laughs> you asked me how to spice it up. I did ask you. I love the um, wedding video. I love that you know every other week changing it up because that's like kind of like a challenge too. Like, let's say you know the you know the your partner is more creative than you are so it's going to like inspire you to want to do something like that's you know more unusual and i think it really translates too to like you know when we're out of quarantine just to be like you know more proactive about doing things with our partner versus just like having them as a person and just kind of like not making sure that they know that they're the most special person next to the kidlets you know like it's yeah. like that's really important um, yes well, all I right. Mean, so any other goodies, be, you know, if they, you've got to really protect your relationship in order to be yeah. a good parent, you know, that yeah. should be always your number one. Otherwise yeah. the rest, I of mean, it. in total transparency, I mean, you know, I've been divorced for over 10 years and, you know, I had, didn't have the greatest marriage. And so it wasn't based on like trust. And so I have a lot of, I wouldn't say trust issues with men, but I, put my kids first before men. And I think that that's like, you know, I put my work before my kids. I mean, I obviously, you know, I'm a full-time single parent, so it's not like I could just be like, you know, Oh my God, I'm just going to fall in love with this guy and not mm -hmm. pay bills. You know, it's just like, that's just not how it, how the cards roll for me. Yeah. But um, so it's just interesting, you know, you know, you're giving me really good advice for my own self about like, I need to actually be a little bit more proactive about, you know, Showing, you know, these guys that I really like. These, do you hear me? These guys. <laughs> well, I mean, if you have, obviously, you know, if you really like the person and you think they're meaning in your life, you have to make them feel special, um, yeah. and you have to make them feel needed. And so, yeah. um, I think women are very strong, like you, and often don't want to put their eggs in a basket and they don't want to risk getting rejected. So they think if they just appear as very independent that whoever they're with, like they, they can't hurt them. But the reality right. is you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt anyway, you know, yeah. whether or not you put yourself in it or not, if you really like the person you're going to feel the sting. So you might as well be intimate and share intimacy and be, be able to express your needs because all that's going to happen if you put any barriers to that is that person is, is going to think that you don't 
you know, that you don't really need them. And especially yeah. most men really need to feel needed. Like they need yeah. to like, as much as you want to be the independent woman, if they don't yeah. feel needed, if they don't feel like, you know, they can be the alpha male or whatever, they're not going to stick around, you know? Yeah. That's important. That's, them. that's really interesting too. It's like you saying like that I'm so independent. I'm actually not dependent independent I'm very dependent I'm dependent on like my friends my family like super dependent upon them I just maybe come off as independent because you know like I don't have the money tree you know it's like I don't have Mm -hmm. it's just me and so therefore instead of trying to like you know show like you know my vulnerabilities because you know I don't want people to know that sometimes I have bad days, you know, trying trying to raise my kids and trying to make money. Like, I don't want people to to hear that. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that's just part of being vulnerable. And I guess maybe I should be more vulnerable because if you think that I'm so independent, I'm so not, I'm the opposite. I'm like so Mm -hmm. incredibly needy, which is a weird kind of, um, like I'm learning so much about myself today. Do I just, are you going to charge me? <laughs> I'll send you the bill later. <laughs> Leah's like, Kelly, we need to talk every week. Um, <laughs> um, but no, but that's like really interesting too, um, about just like perception and reality, you know, like one person's perception, one person's perception. So that's really good. That's good advice. Yeah. Leah, look at you. you. Look at you. So, okay. Any other tips about like spicing? Well, up if in you are in and... a, like, if you are in a relationship and obviously you are uh, in a sex is in sex, like it is important to, to prioritize sex, whether right. that, whatever it takes to get that done, because there is a, you know, a lot of uh, neurochemicals are released during sex that are really important for the to maintain the the health of the relationship like vasopressin and oxytocin all those love chemicals and if you know usually it's hard to get it started but once you get it started you enjoy it and it's like then you know you you have this bonding with this person it just makes the relationship easier and better so you know you don't want to always be saying stressed out like you gotta find a way you know make it happen yeah yeah and it's interesting too, because it's like you say no, but it's actually the best thing for you. You know, it keep it'll you know make you feel more relaxed, mm-hmm. and you'll be more focused, and you'll be because mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it's it's not just it's about the you know all everything that's released, but also just being needed and having someone be there, and you know, that intimacy is just really, yeah. really, really important. And so now I'm kind of worried about like what are people going to do? You know, the girls and I are going back June 1st and I'm just, you know, yes. worried about like, not me, but what are people doing, you know, during this quarantine time? Like, are they just like online doing stuff or like they, I mean, I don't want people to be like kissing and like touching each other during, during COVID. Yeah. So what is, what are your, what's your advice about that? I mean, people that are well, you know, single and yeah, I'm like worried about people, them. It's like, it's got to be, you know, online, online virtual dating, you know, and then if it gets to the point where you feel like this person is worth unquarantining with, then I mean, there's no really difference between giving them a hug and a kiss and having sex. So it's like, you know, it's kind of like at that point, you know, providing you like them enough, you've already unquarantined. So, you know, it's a question of do you think this person is worth the risk? (laughs) <laughs> do you yes or no you know if you like know. them enough right. where's the risk you know yeah. and yeah um there's also a like, question of like uh, you know did, did the person have in which case god i mean they're lucky um you know uh, are they a nobody like no bodies <laughs> no antibodies yeah. or are they you know a, a somebody <laughs> who's positive and if they have yeah. positive antibodies then you're uh, much much less risky um but, you know, of course, you know, you, you can figure that out as you go along, you know, and, and yeah. if that person's worth it, if you've done enough of the online, you know, screening, it's not going to be like, you're going to just meet them at a drink for at a bar for a drink, like it used to be and see if you like them right. or not. Now it's going to be a lot of virtual dating, and then yeah. deciding, you know, is this person worth unquarantining with? Are they going to be part of your pod, as I'm calling it? part of your pod oh my god wait there's that show that talks about the pod i was like in love with that mm-hmm. show um 
it was like dating, but you like to only talk to these people in your pods and you're dating. I can't remember the name of the show. I have like no memory, but I, I love that. I love the idea of people being in your pod. But also, you know, that's really interesting too, that it's just going to be different because, I mean, it has been so different, difficult for people to meet that partner. And now, you know, you've online people are like, it's like, it's great, but it's just like another layer, you know, before, you know, we would be, we would have all these parties, be introduced to people, people that we knew travel, people were just a more, you know, because there wasn't social media, there wasn't, you know, phones all the time. People weren't, you know, people were, you know, open to and more available to talking to people because they'd be sitting at a bar waiting for their friend and somebody yes. would go up and you never knew who that person was or you'd be sitting in the subway or waiting for the bus stop or wherever, it, whatever it is you're doing. Um, so it's just kind of a different time um, of how we're navigating this stuff. So that's, so yeah, do you think that people should just like say, hey, should we t get, take a test? Or like, what do you, what do you think they should Well, do? I mean... Yeah, I mean, you could go get COVID tested before you meet. Uh, if you have access to it, it can't hurt. Um, the yeah. problem is, is that, you know, it's only lasts as long as you've been quarantined. So, you know, you know, if you get a COVID test on Tuesday and you meet the person on Friday and you saw five other people, then it's like kind of even just a waste. Um, right. So the reality right. is, you know, you're just at some point going to have to take a chance and yeah. hope that whoever it is that you're dating is worth worth the chance. I mean, obviously, if they have been relatively careful and, you know, that helps. But it's it's yeah. like it's also like sex. Sex is the same thing. Like, you, you know, are you going to get an STD? Like at some point, you just got to take a chance. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, all right. Let's just see what if any because we only have like eight more minutes. And I want you guys to ask, to ask, what am I saying? To ask um, Leah, Dr. Lisa, what you any questions about you know, relationships during quarantine, sex during quarantine, you know, any kind of you guys are having any kind of issues right now. Um, and, and until they do, I'll just say, like, I, I just wrote a book, a uh, parenting book called No Shame. And if you go okay. to Dr. Leah Lise or on my link to an Instagram, um, okay. I'd love for you to pre-order it. And I'm giving some pre-order incentives. Which Wait, let me write ask. that down. What's it called again? It's called, I want one of Do these. Uh, Do uh, it's, the book is called No Shame. And it's about talking to your children about uh, sexuality, self-esteem, body positivity. But uh, if you order the book, I am offering that I will answer a question, anyone's personal question. Um, oh. So about sex or sexuality. So that's fun. so nice. That's so nice. That's so good so now too. I'm of yours. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions, um, please but let me know. <clears throat> In the interim, we can continue to talk. Um, but if you guys have any sex questions, if you have any COVID questions, quarantine questions, relationship questions. Um, so I was just- Well, I want to ask you a question. How are you handling the sex <laughs> education of your daughters? Like what is your, what have you <clears throat> talked well, about with them? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I um... She's grabbing a drink. <laughs> She's no, like, I don't know. It's like <laughs> address the awkward. No, no, no. It's like the weather has been like raining and then sunny, and like I feel like I'm getting a cold. Um, but um, yeah, the sexuality. So when they were young, I was just like so awkward. I mean, my parents never talked to me about sex or anything, and um, you know, I was kind of a, I was a prude for so long. And so with my kids, I was less like, oh, you know, I I said something like, it, you have to put the pencil into the sharpener, and they were like, what? And I was like, wait, did I just say that? Pencil into the sharpener? <laughs> That's a good one. I was so, I mean, I wasn't expecting. Like, huh? Well, because the school was like, you have to have these conversations. And it's mm. like, I'm a single parent. Like, I'm like, oh my God, it's like, I don't have anyone to defer to. Like, by the way, I'm having a sex talk. What are your thoughts? Like, it's just me. <clears throat> and it was kind of like, they were like, okay, mom, what's this talk about? And I'm like, the talk is about... Something really important. <laughs> but see, you're, you're so used to talking about it, and I'm so not used to, used to talking about it. So when, like, guys, like, try to be provocative with me, it just it just goes over my head. I am so embarrassed. I am like, oh, my God, what are you trying to talk to me about? <laughs> I am like, I can barely have a sex conversation with my kid. But, um, no, I've been very, you know, they're 19 and 21, and I've been, um, you know, later on, I've been just, you know, very specific about how they have to take care of their own bodies and they only have one. And, you know, I want them to have healthy relationships. So that means yeah. that, you know, I want them to recognize, you know, if someone is like, 
you know, d being disrespectful or if they're belittling or if they're you know, like showing kind of signs of any kind of like aggression towards them that they should like, please, you know, just do themselves a favor. Like that is not love P that people, some people really think that that kind of interaction is, is like that kind of attention, that negative attention is love. And it's just not. Yeah. And, I call it um, nagging or people who neg uh, in order to gain attention. It's, it's, you know, it's such a red flag that that person is, is the person that is nagging them has got issues because you should always, you know, build the other person where you're with up and never put them down as a way to garner attention. It's, totally. it's, uh, it's not, it's not good. Totally. So. And also the idea of like isolation, like for example, I'm, I'm like a big advocate of conflict resolution. So if there's a conflict and I'm like, here's the problem, here's the solution. Let's figure it out right now. Like, I'm not like, Oh, let's go to sleep and like be mad at each other and like have a bad night or let's text until four o'clock in the morning. So we're at all like in a bad mood or anything like that's just not how I operate. Um, and so, you know, I really think that's a really good thing. And some people I've, you know, known, I've heard some stories about people like, you know, going through these relationships and like they'll get into arguments and then the, the female or the male will isolate from the other person. So that means like, you know, block them, not talk to them for two weeks. And <clears throat> like when people do that kind of stuff, like that is an N-O. That is like that person does not like you. <laughs> well, it's Ow. also incredibly passive aggressive. You know, right. pa passive aggressive is a really toxic thing for a relationship. So when someone gives you the silent treatment or someone, I mean, it's okay if it's for an hour while they cool off fine but it, you know if someone right. gives you the silent treatment and won't speak to you for days you know that's because they're trying to make you get angry and they're trying to like in a lot of ways gaslight you into into really like losing your mind and making you feel like you're you know you're the one who's got the issues because you know they're they're not getting angry but they just you know they have just made sure that you don't get a voice in the situation. And it's maddening, you know, it's yeah. passive aggressive behavior is maddening. And it yeah. usually results yeah. in the other person's getting so mad, then they get they overreact. And then the person who who um, withdrew could be like, I, I don't know why you're getting so crazy. I didn't do anything. So it's, yeah. it's a very toxic to the relationship. And it really yeah. needs to be looked at. Yeah, that is Ter yeah, I, exactly. That ne I'm negging. I love that. Let's just see what some of these people are asking. Let me see. Um, my 20 year old daughter from Los NYC is quarantining with her boyfriend. Is this, a, is this a healthy thing for men and women? By the way, he's 23. Um, so Los you know, I think that if they're if they're together and they're in uh, some kind of relationship and they've known each other for a while and you trust that this person is not a bad person, then I think it can be a good thing in the sense of, you know, your your late teens and, and, and early 20s are the time for you to really be exploring what what is right for you? What is the relation? Like, what kind of person do you want to be with? How are you going to, you know, you're, you're testing out love, you're testing out, you know, relationships, but you still have the safety of your family to go back home to, you don't have to move in together and have all the stress of like joint financial arrangements and all of that. So if they're going to spend a yeah. couple of weeks together quarantining, just like they might, you know, if they were in college right now, they'd be in each other's dorm rooms and no one would think True twice story. of it. So, right. you know, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I think, you know, I always say like, don't you want to have your, your children to have your, you know, kids to have great um, relationships and sexual experiences when they're younger that are illuminating. So when they finally do meet their person or try to be, you know, in a, a take on children them. or something, you know, they've had all these experiences when they have the safety of their parents to bail them out, you know, and once you have a kid, like, yeah. that ship has sailed, like you're stuck with that person for life. So like, you know, I think kids are, <laughs> it's true. I mean, you're stuck with them for life, whether you right. divorce right. or not, you right. know, exactly. <laughs> you're going to see them. So right. it's like, you know, you really want, like, it's, I almost call it like, you know, pretend you know you're being in these pretend kind of like not pretend but these relationships which are practice and um the problem now is that we put so many pressure on kids to stay single for a really long time because why do you want to get committed focused in your career which is a blessing and a curse because they're also not practicing relationships and so they're 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 pushing 
you know, they're hooking up, but they're not, they're not bonding. And right. you yeah. know, the hook, hookup culture is like, oh yeah, you can have sex, but don't call me the next day. That's just right. clingy. And I'm like, right. what? You know, and yeah. that's not, that's not going to help you figure out how to be in a healthy relationship someday. So, so do you think, you, do you think that they're saying that just clingy or, or do you think that, that the, the younger generation is saying things like, Hey, I don't want to be like your girlfriend, or I don't want you to put labels on me because they actually do want you to. And so they're just like, you know, because it's always like, if you push people away, they'll come back. Is that, you know, everyone's saying love is forever. Just said great advice. Of course, you have great advice. It's Dr. Elise. Like, yeah, hello, <laughs> Leah's amazing. Go ahead. So what do you think about that? Well, I think that that is total bullshit. Like, if you got to pretend, you know, whatever that, you know, the rules that book, if you got to pretend yeah. like you don't care about someone to tell them you care about them, how, what, what, does that make sense to you? It sounds crazy. Um, I think it's okay to love in the moment. You say, I want to love you in this moment. We are together this moment. We're going to love each other in this moment. We're not going to promise it's going to be forever. You know, I, I, I do think it's always right to call someone the next day after you have sex, even if you don't plan to ever see them again, just to say that it was really nice. And that even though you can't be in a relationship right now, you really enjoyed it. And you always treasure the time you had with that person. Be classy. You know, you don't have to True be like, story. you know what? You know, just be classy. You don't have I, to be I, like, I, I'm sorry, I don't want a girlfriend, I'm not into you. Like, it I would, totally you know, agree. I'm like, always really nice to people. I'm always just like, you know, tr try to be kind and thoughtful. And I'm just like, you know, it's just not working right out right now. I'm always really transparent because, you know, sometimes some of the people that I, you know, I went on a couple of dates with, I don't necessarily want to date, but I actually really like them as friends. And so, you know, I may not feel that intimacy towards them, but I like them for a reason. And so I don't like to like, I don't like, I don't want to, I don't like having a, um, I call it a graveyard of relationships. <laughs> like I've, some people just like literally just go through people like, and it's just, you know, I like to give people a chance because you just never know too. Later on, you might meet someone and maybe, you know, the timing wasn't right. And then you see them yeah. later on and you're like, oh my God, you know, you never know. I mean, I've come back, I've come back to, to guys later on in my life. Um, yeah, so here's la boyfriend. one last question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one last question for you, Leah. So Frankie Rayner, I recently broke up with my new boyfriend because he is too big in bed and we got into an argument about size. Is size an important relationship? Well, I don't know what he means by too big. I'm going to assume it means genitalia, but it, is it because he's too tall? I'm not clear on that. But, okay, just uh, telling you, that's what they're asking me. That's what they're asking uh, me. If it's, you know... I'll just keep it general and say that there are many components to attraction and right. you never know what those components are. And if, if that component, whatever it might be, isn't working for you, then, then don't stay, you know, yeah. um, you don't need to have a reason. Uh, the reason could just be like, I'm just not that into you. Like, I'm just not that into you. And that's right. okay. Like, um, and that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Or like if someone, I mean, I'm six foot two. So talk about a lot of people breaking up with me because of my size. A lot of people were totally freaked out by me. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, and I'm okay with yeah, that. Yeah, but you're, you're six foot two and you're gorgeous and you're alive and you have these amazing long legs and you're, I mean, you're unbelievable. And your husband is a rock star. You guys are amazing. Stop. Don't say things like that. I don't like it when tall women are like, I'm tall. It's like, yeah, you are. Okay. I got that. I saw that. Yeah. I'm tall too. So, uh, yeah, and it's awesome. But I'm saying some people are just not into that. And yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna like, you know, get my pen, you know, get all upset about why this person doesn't like me. It might be just because I'm too tall for them. Fine. Yeah, like, that's enough. Yeah. You know, I think that you should, I don't know, if, if you're not attracted to someone, it's the spark is not there. Don't question it. Just roll with it. Yeah. I like that because some people are like, if the spark isn't there, and they think like, well, maybe we can just figure this out. It's like, if it's not there, it's not there. It's like, yeah, it's just not there. But again, yeah. like I always, you know, like you're, you know, just being nice to people, I think is just always, you know, good form because you just never know. And it's always just nice to be nice anyway. Um, I want to read this one question. I really like it. Summer is a time for kiss for first kisses and other personal milestones for team. What do we say to do? Um, I want to talk about loss because I have been, uh, you know, I'm a child psychiatrist. They see kids coming in and yeah, out of my office yeah. all the time okay, and they good. are experiencing such profound loss. Like they're missing their graduations. They're missing their friends and they never had a period of time in their life where they've been asked to sacrifice like this. I mean, a lot of the kids, the millennials and below never experienced a war or 
you know, or, or World Trade Towers going down or any, I mean, they're just like very kind of, they've grown up in a bubble where, where things have been relatively good. Yeah. And um, I think that this loss will make them stronger and they will have adversity, but don't lie to them and be like, oh, it's fine. Like, oh, homeschooling is just like real school. Like, not, nah. you know, oh, no. the virtual prom, and prom, you know, no, it stinks. You know, they're not getting educated as well. They're, they're missing out on the formation of absolutely amazing mentoring relationships through coaches and teachers and all the people who mentor them at this age. And they're missing out on their first kiss. They're missing out on their first sexual experience. They're missing out on, yeah, prom. They're missing out on, you know, all like so many things, which are so important to their development. And, and guess what? It's not going to come back. Like you just don't get like a, it's not like a do over. So it's like, you know, it is, it is hard and it is sad. And I think being real with them about loss and the stages of grief, like, you know, um, ex- uh, anger, bargaining, you know, acceptance, sadness, and like how they're going to go through all those stages and that you'll be there for them, but it is a loss. And that's what I suggest that you do, you know? Yeah. I appreciate that. So Leah, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to put this on my IGTV so you guys can watch it, um, you know, for the next couple of days. And um, we're going to definitely check out your book, No Shame. And I'm going to actually write it down in the description so everybody knows it's available on Amazon. And then later for the blog, you can just send me, you can just text me the link and then I'll put the link in my blog so they can just go directly to it and just make a purchase. And um, I right. really appreciate your, the conversation today. Cause I really actually needed this today. <laughs> I, okay. I might be calling you a lot and it's just, you know, you, you are just so easygoing and it's just easy to talk to you. And, you know, it's just interesting, just, you know, we're talking about like, you know, COVID and sex and like here I was, you know, opening up to you about, you know, how, I feel like people perceive me and that was just, you know, kind of a special yeah. moment for me that I really appreciate. Well, you're, I mean, you are, you know, beautiful, gorgeous, fun, funny, spectacular. So, you know, I think that, uh, that, that you're doing a fantastic job with your, with your girls as well. And it's not easy. There's a lot of balance. So there's a lot of juggling and balance. Appreciate so, that. Wonderful. Just no pencil and no sharpener. <laughs> yeah. Pencil yeah. sharpener, no birds, no bees. You <laughs> so, know, let's just like call it what it really is, which is a peanut. <laughs> I say that. <laughs> All right, Leah, we love you. Leah, we love okay. you. Thank you so much Take for doing I really bye appreciate bye. it. This is awesome. Love you. Bye. Take care. Bye. bye.